Fish Food Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. You and me, Norman, we ain't nothing but mammals, so let's review it like we do on your YouTube channel. Mm, uh, yes, but there's so many questions. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> like the song is so... Mm. <laughs> the inspiration, hey, if people ship it, that's just the nature of the internet. It's true. Uh, well, anyway, um, Tara is away attending a wedding or getting involved in a wedding. I don't know which one you pick. Ooh, more shipping. I know, yay. But uh, he's not joining us today, so uh, that's too bad. But anywho, uh, in today's episode, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic issue number 73. In this comic, or in this issue, a magical amulet caused Fluttershy to become more animalistic. I think Discord would like that. Rawr. Oh my. Yes. So anyway, uh, before we get into the review, uh, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? It's an interesting comic in that mostly the artwork, because this is the work of uh, Tony, also known as Pencils. And... Oh, boy, I'm going to botch his last name. I feel bad when I do this. Kusisto? Is Kusisto. Kusisto? Kusisto. Kusisto. Yeah. Kusisto. Well, Tony does remarkable work. It, it's a whole new level of detail uh, and what I would call solid. Very solid artwork. It's not as stretchy as one might expect of a cartoon. And that in it's kind of funny that as the story progresses at first it doesn't match as much but then as it get the story gets more serious the artwork actually reinforces it better in terms however of a story it's mostly just a thing is happening how our ponies react mm. so not as much of a character insight but i do believe that this is a safe entry for tony because uh, this is his first project, and technically, he's proven himself as an artist, as a My Little Pony artist in the fandom, but in Hasbro slash IDW's eyes, he's still an amateur, not yet there, not to their standards yet. So this is a safe entry for him to go in. Uh, there's no stakes, it's just a one-shot, it's just a size of life comic. Ah, the one shotage. But let us not delay. I will say for all my, my back and forth, I do enjoy this comic. I do think it's fun. Mm -hmm. And as for me, this comic is a lot of fun. I, I do like the art. Like Tony here did a great job. And right out of the gate, he did the cover for this one. And it shows that, yo, I'm good. Here's my, uh, here's what I can do. Uh, what do you guys think? Like, right out of the gate, the cover, the cover itself is just awesome. Uh, it's just Fluttershy uh, roaring at a tiger, and the tiger's cowarding. Like, that is awesome. And you mentioned before with uh, details in the background, even in the cover, you just take a look-see. There's a lot of details going on there, from the walls to the trees in the background, even the art on the wall back there and even to the uh, resting raccoon at the back I mean there's so much to pick at or there's so much to look in the cover itself and as for the story the story is really good I, I like the story the story is so much fun there, there's so much to look at there's so much to ponder and there's so much to ask and why couldn't uh, Star Swirl keep his stuff uh, Star Swirl. He's he, by na his nature. He seems to muck things up. I know. I will say on the cover that bat. That bat's got something going on. I know. I think it's saying they saying they told me Fluttershy would go crazy, but I didn't listen. <laughs> but uh, that could be. Uh, you remember Robin Williams when he played that bat in Frangali? Oh yes, Batty. Yeah, something similar, except for the fur tone. But anyway, uh, before we head into the comic, well, or into the review, pause here and go read it first. Welcome back, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the comic. So, let's start off. 
we start off the comic with a nice beautiful day. There's a sparkling thing hanging on a tree branch. A bird takes it and it seems to be a necklace of sorts. And starting from here, whatever can go wrong does go wrong or is the trope that item is transferred one from one person to another person and is just hijinks. Uh, if I were to just say what's going on, it would be repetitive and it kind of cuts the, what you call this, uh, majesty of it. So let's just say that the bird picks it up and a hawk tries to eat the bird and let's just say that it transfers one from one animal to another animal until it reaches a dog which somehow buries it in the animal sanctuary and said dog has a collar. Now, I wonder, why is a dog in this sanctuary? Maybe Fluttershy is pet-sitting. What is at night? Like, that's irresponsible for her. Let's be honest, Fluttershy has a few black marks on her uh, on her record as an animal caretaker. Yeah, true. Or perhaps this dog is a neighbor's dog that just wanders in at night and is so in- intrigued. I mean, think of all the scents that must be paraded through the sanctuary. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But anywho, uh, the dog uh, buries the amulet and we go to the next day where we see Fluttershy doing her rounds in the sanctuary. And she's stepping on the dug ground or broken ground ground is it broken like that's how you say it right when somebody mm, breaks disturbed. soil yeah okay uh she's stepping on the disturbed ground where the amulet is buried and yeah she just does her round which means fluttershy just has the worst luck how so of all the places she could have stood it was on top of the magical artifact uh, true that 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 is it's one out of <laughs> it's one out of a million yep but anywho, um, she does a round, and first up is a timber wolf, a pup timber wolf. It seems to be, oh, it seems to hurt its paw, and now Fratisha is just trying to nurse it up to health. So Angel Bunny doesn't really like the timber wolf because he says it's uh, nasty, it's very angry and dangerous. But Fratisha just says, "Oh, don't worry. Uh, after he's healed, we're just gonna." Uh, airdrop him into the wild again. So, no problem. This is just going to be temporary. They visit a cat who is sleeping and seems to be over-grooming and making himself bald. And it seems that being in the sanctuary relaxes the kitty. So, yay, that's good. So, in the afternoon, Pinkie Pie comes along, just wanting to thank Fluttershy for taking care of Gummy while she and Maud hit to, where was it again? Roxville? Yep, Roxville. I wonder if that's what they call where her family lives. Hmm, probably. But anywho, it's not terribly, it's not very horse punny related, is it? Yeah, but if you're rock beast, it does make sense. But that's only if you enjoy a sedentary lifestyle. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of Townsville. Attacked by monsters and criminals every other day? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, seems seems like a normal day. Uh, but anywho, uh, Fluttershy is lounging on the sofa and she seems rather aloof, rather lazy. She's sleeping and not really caring. Um, Flutter, Pinkie Pie is worried because she doesn't seem like herself. And Fluttershy just leaves, not giving a care. And I'm going to pause here. So Silver, uh, it's been a lot. But what do you think? Well, starting with uh, the very first page, I think the nickname for Tony should go from pencils to panels, as that's a lot to draw. A lot of settings. It really shows off his art style, because he's not really... I don't think he's trying to emulate the show, which is not a bad thing. He's putting his own style to it. But you see just what he can draw, and it's beautiful. True that, true that. And one of the oh, things... Guess... Sorry. Please, uh, yes. But what one of the things that we notice that okay, um, obviously we both love Andy Price. Andy Price's work is awesome. It's full of detail. It's full of awesomeness. 
But when you see Tony's work here, it's it's almost to the same level, but not there. But it's like he has his own style to say that, yo, I can go toe-to-toe with Andy if I want to. Well, it's a different kind of awesome. He can... Tony can draw these richly detailed environments and these these uh, great animals and everything looks well-proportioned uh, and very dynamic. It's He does not go for background images or, or background references. So where Andy's is almost a scavenger hunt of what references can you spot? What do you get? But we don't uh, have that with Tony. With Tony, it's just look at that beautiful detail. And I guess that's why Andy ekes out a little bit ahead for me. He makes the reading the comic a game, a uh, fun one. But like I mentioned before previously, uh, this is Tony's first foray into the world of uh, My Little Pony comics. So I-, I feel like IDW may have just told him, uh, play it safe. Because if I remember right, in Later comics, he's done a bit more. He, sorry, he's done a bit more with what he can do. Well, we shall we shall see. We'll be getting to those comics eventually. True, true. So, anything more, Silver? Well, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I only talked about the first page. Huh. So, like I say, Fluttershy has bad uh, bad luck. And okay. Did we just learn that Fluttershy doesn't like bananas? Because Princess Celestia is going to be heartbroken. <laughs> uh, but, mm, like, she doesn't it's... like chocolate too, so that's something. Well, that might just be... Okay, strawberries, she doesn't want to eat that in front of Applejack. Chocolate, maybe she's watching her figure, I don't know. But banana, no for sure. No for sure. That's rather hardcore. It's like, mm, do you like bananas? No. no. Oh, well, that's too bad. Because you're going to have them on the moon. <laughs> on the moon! Oh, my God. That yes. thing is so long. It is, but uh, we're continually tempted. Yeah, but is that uh, some some memes are always good. Yes, we, we are tempted to meme until there's no tomorrow. <laughs> if you know what I, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, God. What, Silva? So... That's really all I've got to say at this moment. It's, we're getting a sample of this beautiful artwork. And like I say, Tony's art is very solid. He doesn't stretch or, or alter proportions for a cartoonish effect. In some ways, it's almost a more serious art, even though this is meant to be, a, a, a at least the start of this is very whimsical. Mm, it, it seems that way. It seems that way. All righty. Anyway. But yes, that's... That's my two cents for now. All right. And, well, uh, I'm not going to say mine because, well, uh, I, I found a policy that if I butt in in certain situations, those are my thoughts. So I think I shared mine already. Uh, anyway, uh, let's carry on. Uh, the next uh, in, in the next evening, we see that Fluttershy has been going around town just absorbing or just imitating other animals and notice the owl here it's there's something wrong with it like there, there, there's something affecting it or something like that it's all sparkly and put that as a side note because that is something important so uh, in the morning Fluttershy flies above the trees in the sky like everybody's surprised like even Applejack she perched on a tree and looks around with her neck like an owl. Uh, and then later on, she goes to a mouse. And let's just say that this is a montage where she just do what animals do: roll around in a roll around in the mud like a pig, run on a treadmill like a hamster. Uh, runs around with dogs and hops on lily pads like a frog, even breaking wind in front of Rarity like a skunk. So, oh dear. <laughs> so this has been really crazy. So all of her friends are worried about this because Fluttershy is not acting normal. Like there's something strange going on. And I find it strange that Strixie's here. 
Like, what? Why is... Hello, Trixie. Why is Trixie here? I, I have a feeling that this is supposed to be Starlight. I don't know. I mean, even Starlight's not as close to Fluttershy. They don't interact a whole lot, even though they are friends. True, but it's... Like, uh, the comic setting is set where the school's already established and the sanctuary is established. So, uh, Starlight would be there. And the situation right now here, Trixie is here. Why is Trixie here? It doesn't make any sense in terms of reasons that she, why, why should she, why would she be there? But I do welcome it. But it's just like, why Trixie? Like, I feel like this should be Starlight. <sighs> Boys. But anywho, I'm just going to carry on. Um, uh, the group tries to figure out what's wrong with her. And Twilight comes up with an excuse or reason. And I'm just going to read it verbatim. She could have just been tired. She's been pushing... In a lot of time between the school and the shelter, what's easier to believe? That she's just tired and exchange or that she's under the influence of some weird magical spell? And everybody looks at her with that face of, is the spell? And she even agrees that, yep, it's a spell. So now, Twilight and Trixie heads to the library to figure out what's going on with Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie and Applejack corrals Rainbow Dash to help them find out or keep an eye out for Fluttershy. And I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, uh, that was pretty short, but I believe there's a lot of to digest here. So, what do you think? Well, when I, I have so many questions going through my mind about the logistics of this and None of them lead to happy places. She's running with the dogs. Does that mean she marks her territory? Oh, She's no. female, so no? Female dogs mark their territory. Really? Oh, and I'm not, I don't have a dog, so I've got no idea. I'm just, I don't want to go too far down this road because it leads to dark places. <laughs> so that's not. Dark places. I can only imagine how light is she if she can actually hop those lily pads. The lightest pony of them all. And I appreciate that while we're we're having K Trixie's cameo and the discussion with the ponies, even in the corner, Tony's putting her singing with birds and slithering like a snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. But with Trixie, I really feel like this is just fans. A uh, uh, shout out to the fans. We know you love Trixie. Here, have some Trixie. We haven't gotten to see Trixie in the comics in a good long while. True, true. But... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's tr Trixie here. Like, I do wonder why. Because logically, or yeah, logically, she shouldn't be there. Like, she has no reason to be with the group in school without uh, Starlight around. Like, it's it feels like the creator or the writer uh, just wanted to put in a character just because. Like, he forgot... Oh, who Who is the writer, by the way? Uh, writer is... Tom, Tom Zaylor. Hmm. Tom Zaylor. He shouldn't be that bad. Huh. But... If, well, hang on. I don't think this is bad, per se. There is one thing that Trixie's bringing that none of the others do. Sass? Yes. I mean, when, when Twilight says we're going to the library to, to check on things... Trixie goes. It should be noted that no matter how much she protests, she does go. But her reaction is, oh, joy. There's humor in that resigned disappointment and that sass. True, but I'm just, from the timeline standpoint and for reasoning standpoint, why is she there? Uh, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying that in terms of storyline and all that it's illogical for her to be there but I'm not, I'm not saying that it's bad I'm just pointing out certain timelines and storylines and whatnot it seems out of place that's all either way she is here and she is sassy mm -hmm. 
Anyway, carrying on. So we go to the sanctuary with the three of them. Uh, that's Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Pinkie Pie. And sanctuary? No, it's... Okay, this is just confusing. Why is the sanctuary in the background while Fluttershy's cottage is there? Like, oh my god. Anyway, uh, bursting out of the cottage is Zephyr Breeze, Fluttershy's brother. Uh, he's there to borrow something from Fluttershy, but it seems that he couldn't find Fluttershy and the animals are going crazy because they want to eat. And Pinkie Pie just explains that, oh, um, this is not normal. She's like, Fluttershy would never abandon the animals. Like, that's just strange. And Angel Bunny here drags Pinkie to the sanctuary or somewhere, or no, it uh, drags uh, Pinkie Pie to the timber wolf, the cub. And the cub is timid, shy, like she, it's uh, cowering in the corner. And Pinkie Pie deduced that, oh, it seems scared like uh, how Fluttershy is. Like, could it be that Fluttershy absorbed its personality traits and whatnot? Well, they deduced that, oh, if that's true, that means... Uh, Fluttershy is acting like a timber wolf and might hurt somebody. So they decide to go back to town and see if they can find Fluttershy. And in the next panel, we do see Fluttershy stalking around, trying to get a bite out of the CMCs. And once she pounces, Rainbow Dash jumps in and stops the biting. Oh no. So Fluttershy here seems to be really really strong and bucks Rainbow Dash off her and runs away. So Rainbow Dash gives chase to Fluttershy and Rarity comes along and asks what's going on. So the CMC just explains that Fluttershy tried to eat us yell. Twilight comes along saying that oh um we kind of know what's wrong it's to sort the beardless dumb amulet. The guy just couldn't keep his jewelry away. I mean, anyway, uh, said jewelry is uh, the power to absorb, was it? No. Uh, it doesn't say what does it do. It just says influence of the relic of Star Huh. He was trying to commune with the animals. Uh. Instead, So, honestly, I feel like he was trying to get his Dr. Doolittle on. <laughs> All right, then. Not the Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Oh. version. Which one? No. The Eddie Murphy or the original? I will go with the original, because for me, nothing can top the original. Ah, all right. Then. So, anywho, uh, Rarity sets the eye, her eye on the book and says, wow, that is a pretty big gem. So, back on the edge of town, we see that the three of our heroes try to corral a angry Fluttershy. And it seems that it's working because it's pushing uh, her away to the shelter. And, well, while this is going on, uh, Twilight and Rarity tries to find the amulet. Twilight and Zephyr has no chance or didn't find anything, while Rarity and Spike found it. Now they have to decide what they need to do because Twilight has no idea if destroying would do the trick. So with no idea and not enough time, Spike eats the amulet and somehow that cancels out the effect in Fluttershy. So everybody or every creature is back to normal. The... Timberwolf gets angry and Fluttershy is back to herself. Um, the only casualty here is Spike acting like animals. Oh god, no. So a week later, uh, we see Fluttershy carrying... Wow, Fluttershy is strong. Anyway, uh, carrying a box with the Timberwolf inside and setting it free, returning it to her, its pack. So... Twilight says, uh, how are you feeling and whatnot, and Fluttershy just says, um, I'm feeling okay, but this does uh, give me an insight 
of how the animals act and think. So that's a positive. And with that, everybody flies back to Ponyville and despite complaining, when is this effect going to be done? And everybody laughs. With that, a comic ends. And Silver, final thoughts and what do you think? All right, well... This is what I mean when I say that Tony's art style actually begins to complement the comic more in later pages. As Fluttershy goes from these uh, cutesy moments of imitating animals to taking on a natural predator, his his more serious, solid art style lends a certain menace to Fluttershy's poses and expressions, even the way she moves. Granted, I realize how weird that says talking about a still comic. (laughs) <laughs> but consider uh, a scene where she's facing off against Rainbow, Pinky, and Applejack. And Fluttershy is sort of turning her head while her body faces another way, snarling. You really believe that she's taken on a feral uh, personality. That is true. And I have to point it out. Applejack has a bandana around her. Uh, no, a scarf around her neck. <laughs> Maybe she felt like diversifying that day. Yeah, and then it's gone in the next stream. <laughs> well, maybe Fluttershy bit it off. I don't know. Yeah, but I do enjoy some of the accessories like that. Like, yeah, uh, bandana or a scarf around uh, Rainbow, sorry, um, Applejack can work. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And also, have to point it out, Pinkie Pie has a clown hat on, so yay. Well, that, that's just Pinkie Pie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In some ways, that makes more sense than the bandana. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anything more to add, Silver? Zephyr Breeze's involvement. At, when, given that the next issue focuses on him, I thought this would be a lead-in, but they're really very separate. I'm not sure there's any reason for Zephyr to be there. It's kind of like with Trixie. Are you including them to serve a purpose that you need a, a certain type of character or is it just because I can it feels I like no it feels like it's because I can and I I got no idea why because uh okay the beginning says that Zephyr is there because he wants to borrow something from Fluttershy uh it's not said because well let's not go into it but beyond that like okay I'm guessing, okay, Zephyr is there just to take care of her animals because at least he owes her that while she is in uh, her uh, mad dog state. I'm going to put forth an alternate theory. It's not so much the u- utility of uh, role in caring for the animals because we see he's quite terrible at that. Zephyr kind of represents the characters that are most overwhelmed by this situation. While the main six are proactive and taking measures to either contain Fluttershy or find a solution, Zephyr's kind of representing the characters like, what is going on? What are they going to do? What, What's happening? So he's the vulnerability that it needs to be expressed to make this more threatening. But in one panel, like the panel where he is with Twilight, and it seems like that he is in a daze, like he's just seeing stars, like he's really tired. Like, dude, are, are, are you even there? Are, are you even fully there? I mean, it's Zephyr. He always tries to have that siesta. <laughs> to him. Uh, true. But I don't see that kind of energy in here. Like, I, I don't see the siesta. But probably it's just that they needed, what you mean, like you mentioned before, a character to be the panicky one. I don't know how you see siesta energy. Is a siesta is all about getting energy back. You have no energy. Yeah, yeah it, it looks that way, but I don't know. Anything more to that, Silva? Well, like we say, Star Swirl, he keeps making things worse. He keeps leaving his stuff around. So you just like, come on, Star Swirl, pick up your mess. Replace your divot. <laughs> so true. And, well, S- Spike becomes the punching bag that is far, far, far too common these days. Actually, it's been too common throughout this series. That is true. That is true. But th- that's all I got. All right. And as for me, I like this comic. Uh, Tony's work is awesome. And the story here is not bad. With a few caveats in terms of character appearance. 
uh, Trixie and Zephyr are the two, but I can forgive Zephyr because, well, Zephyr is Fluttershy's brother, so his involvement is logical, while Trixie is questionable at best. The amulet itself is one of those questions of why is it there to begin with? What happened to it to be there and whatnot? As the overall comic is, it's not bad. Like, it is fun. Like, just watching Tony work here is really good. Uh, other than that, I, I do like uh, the expression on all the characters. Um, with Fluttershy here, you get to see a lot from those bedroom eyes to the wild nature of Fluttershy that's been influenced by a timber wolf. And it, it's not bad. Like, this comic here is not bad. I would say read it, buy it if you can. And other than that, um, I, I got anything more to add. So anyway, um, that's the review. Hope you guys enjoy it. And Silver, what are we going to do for next week? Well, it's time to return to Little Witch Academia and to try and avoid putting a my in front of that title. Ah, I see. We're going to go with a rather kooky uh, episode this time. Yep, yep. And this episode here is a lot of fun. I, I, I'll just say this, that it, it managed to get a tear out of me. And those, hmm, I, I feel like I, I, I may have uh, shed tears at a drop of a hat. Hmm. But anyway... If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitiongmail.com. You can reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at DBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me so many places. You could find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. If you search uh, on Patreon or Kofi for Silver Quill, you'll find me. I'm on YouTube. Just do a search for After the Fact or MLP Silver Quill, and I shall appear. And we're coming up on the res restoration of the MLP comics and the start of Season 10. So I'll get to be posting editorials and reviews on Equestria Daily. Yeah, that's awesome. Can't wait for it, man. And there's also, what, a Pony Life? That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, we're, we, at the time we're, we're recording this podcast... We're less than a week away and wondering, okay, is it for real this time? Yeah. Because we've gotten a lot of false starts. Because the 18 is also one and the 21st is also one, so which one's going to be? Well, it'll be weird if it's the 18th. That's a Thursday. Yeah, true. And it could be uploaded on YouTube. Yes, which will make it even more bizarre. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, even if we do review it, we're going to review it as... Uh, like how we usually record our show on the weekends, so it doesn't really affect us that bad. Yes. But anywho, uh, yes. Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And talking about, well, the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also myself, like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vequil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. So, while Fluttershy, do you think Discord's going to enjoy it? Well, I mean, he's he's got a little bit of animals with him, so he probably feels a kindred spirit. Yeah, but knowing Fluttershy, uh, and knowing how extreme she can go, like, Discord's going to be in a lot of pain. Well, I don't know, he might be into that. Oh no! <laughs>